We're back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us uh, this morning. Talking Social Security and your money and uh, what you need to know. Josh Horn's going to answer your questions. He's with the administration. It's good to have him on. The administration. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of administrations, but this is Social Security. If you want to join us, 737 7587 is the number. Uh, talk uh, about whatever you're dealing with. Let's go to Thomas next. Thomas, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good. How can we help you, Tom? Yes, sir. I just have a quick question. Uh, I live in the state of Kentucky. I'm disabled, been disabled since 2005. I rely on my wife for everything. I mean, that, I, I'm not able to do a whole lot. Is there any kind of thing like a caregiver? Because I have to have, she can't work because of me, put it that way. Do, is there anything that would Social Security could pay her? Oh, separate. For, by the way, are you already drawing Social Security disability? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, beyond that, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, unfortunately, no, there's not. I understand what you're saying, but no, there's not really any kind of caregiver benefit or or even uh, spouse's <clears throat> benefit until your spouse re is over age 62. So, I mean, if your spouse is under 62 and she's just taking care of you, there's not really any kind of benefit there. Uh, for her, the only exception would be if, if there were minor children, she could draw mother's benefits, but that's, again, if there's minor children drawing. Okay, we should say also, and that, that's a good question. It's mm -hmm. unfortunate that's not there because she had to quit her job to help take care of him, which means they lose that income, which means they're more or less living, I guess, on just his disability and whatever mm -hmm. savings or investments they have. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, by the way, and, and I'm glad he called from Kentucky. We have viewers that span outside just Tennessee. Social Security, basically, the same nationwide, right? That's right. It's a federal okay. program, yeah. so it is. Uh, the rules and everything are pretty much the same. Uh, the only one exception that I throw out there is sometimes when you're drawing SSI, the state will supplement that. A certain states will, not Tennessee. So, for example, California, and you can imagine the California um, cost of living is a lot higher. So, California actually supplements SSI recipients. And so, we have sometimes we have people that move to Tennessee, and they're like, "Well, why did my benefit go down?" Well, it's not that your benefit went down; it's that you don't, oh. you no longer have the state supplement. So, in California, they meaning they'll give you a little more money. Mm -hmm. And and again, you're right, cost of living. But I'll tell you what, the cost of living sometimes in Middle Tennessee and Nashville, and I'm from LA. Yeah, it's not quite there in some of the areas obviously along the beaches are absurd but I mean it's on par yeah living <laughs> I mean, in, yeah, SSI in Nashville oof. it's not easy mm -hmm. not easy all right let's go to Angela hi Angela hi how can we help you I have uh, two quick questions if that's okay sure okay my first question question is I am I will be 46 in September and I've been on start receiving my disability Social Security in November 2006 well, when I got my back pay, I paid all my bills off except for my student loan. Okay, I barely have enough every month. I'm like a negative four or five hundred dollars every month with my bills. So I can't even make payment arrangements on my student loan. I've heard that there's a way that you can get it written off. Is that true? Now, I'm not sure if that's a question for you or yeah. the student loan program, but meaning that you would get forgiveness for your student loan because you're, you're disabled? Yes. Huh. It's not, yes. it's not through Social Security, I can tell you that. I guess he uh, doesn't know if it's through. There may be a program with that through your loan program if you contact them and let them know about your situation, but not, not yeah. through that. There's no forgiveness through Social Security. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. The, thank you. The other question is... I noticed um, when I started getting disability that one time I went to file taxes and they told me because I wasn't even bringing in $13,000 a year, there was no need to uh, file tax. Right. Okay, so that's true too. Mm -hmm. Even with, you know, like. Well, it depends. Yeah, I think if, if you're making only 13 grand a year, you're not going to be paying any taxes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're just not. So you yeah. don't have to apply. Now, sometimes there's other reasons uh, to apply for taxes so you're on the record or whatever, and they're not going to take anything out. Um, but yeah, so have you been filing at all lately? I haven't filed, ooh, in over eight years, but in the last four years, I have two grandchildren mm -hmm. I take care of. Okay. And I assist with their daycare and, I mean, daily basis. Sure. I take care of them. Yeah. 
So I, I was, you know, thinking I should be able to file something. I take care of my grandkids. But okay, but you, you say, are you paid for that? for taking care of them. Yeah. Well, no, they're my grandchildren. They live with me. Oh, okay. And so, but you would wonder about filing and getting some kind of refund? Yeah, yeah. But the problem is you wouldn't get a refund if you don't have any income. You're just saying to be compensated for caring for the grandkids. Well, the only income I have is my disability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't. I guess have there's income. It may not be enough to, you know, keep me out of the hole every month, but I sure. do have income and do the best I can with that. So yes, mm. I was wondering since I take care of my grandchildren, you know, should I, I should be able to okay. file? Shouldn't I? Would there be some other added benefit, like you were talking before about parental benefits? If she's the one in charge of the grandkids, is there any other benefit she could apply for? If she, if she adopted the children, oh, mm. uh, or if both of the parents were deceased, uh, then sometimes there's some benefits payable to the children. But with the, unless it's one of those two situations, then there's not any kind of grandchild benefit. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, well, thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. your uh, sure. information. I appreciate it. You take care of yourself, Angela, and it's good of her to take care of the grandkids. Mm -hmm. That's pretty neat. Did you say we need to take a break, or do we have... I'm sorry. Oh, I, let's take another call. I'm sorry. I wasn't sure if uh, she said that. Let's go to Beverly. Hi, Beverly. Hi, uh, Nick. How are you and the good. gentleman doing this morning? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Good. Listen, I hadn't planned on commenting on anybody else's comment, but since Angela just uh, asked you a couple questions that I have answers to, I would like to just share. Sure. Go ahead. Before I ask my question. Okay. So for her, with her student loans, yes, there is a program that would forgive her loans because she is disabled and she needs to contact the Department of Education. Okay. okay. I don't know who her loans are through. They should all be through the Department of Education now because a few years ago, the um, private um, loans were transferred to the Department of Education. She can call a, a branch of the Department of Education called NELNET, that's N-E-L-N-E-T, uh, dot com. She can go there too, and yes, she can file for that. And secondly, as far awesome. as her grandchildren, if she's keeping them on a regular basis, it seems like she could apply for assistance through the Department of Human Services. Uh, you know, those are great points. Uh, the first one, I was not aware of that, even mm -hmm. though I guess that might have existed. And you're correct. I mean, it all depends on the relationship and, the, the, I guess, the involvement of the parents and all that. So, hey, it's definitely worth looking into. Mm -hmm. And really, really good, uh, good advice there. Uh, I appreciate that, Beverly. Now, did you have a question? Now, my question is, uh, um, as your disability, uh, social security disability, what happens when you turn 62? Do you, it, does it stay the same, or does it switch over to uh, just straight Social Security, or what? And of course, the big question when you're asking that behind it is, are you going to get less or more? And I think we get one of these calls at least every show, yeah, and it's a good it's question. It's a good question. So yeah. basically, uh, your full retirement age amount is the same as your disability amount. So not 62, but your full retirement age, which for you is probably 66 in two months or four months, something like that. Um, whenever that happens, then you seamlessly transition from disability to retirement. You don't see any difference. Uh, but on our end, it, it switches from disability to retirement, and the only difference you might see is that you won't have any periodic medical reviews anymore. Because while you're drawn disability, every three, five, or seven years, you're up for a medical review, but you don't have any of those after you turn your full retirement age. Yep, that's good to know. So it'll all stay the same. Will she get a letter or a notification at least that yeah, the switch has been made? Yeah, probably, in fact, that's probably more confusion than anything, because yeah. people will get that letter well, and they're what's like, wait, what's, what's, this? what's going on? But that is just a letter telling you that Technically, you're switching from one program to another. Okay, no change there. Good question, though, Beverly. Listen, we appreciate that. Let's go to Jewel. Hi, Jewel. Top of the morning, Mr. Nick. Top of the morning to you, Jewel. Good to see you and your guests there today. Okay. Um, I was wondering, are there going to be any pay increase <laughs> this year on the Social Security or, I don't know if they do on SSI? And another question is, a friend of mine, he has his own business. He mows yards and he does real, real good for himself, making good money, has good equipment and everything. And he asked me, 
He says, I ain't filed no kind of taxes or nothing in the last five years. What do you reckon I ought to do? And I suggested he get an accountant because, you know, I don't know if he keeps his gas receipts for his mowers and his automobiles to haul them. Well, is he, is he usually paid uh, probably by cash or check? Uh, it's usually by uh, check. Okay, yeah, so he, he just works for these people and they write him a check and he puts it in his bank account and he has not paid any taxes on any of the money he's earned? Well, he's self-employed. He <laughs> don't work. He just moves. <laughs> okay, well, Josh. Okay, Jewel, good question. Um, well, first of all, the yeah. cost of living decision, or the cost of living adjustment decision is usually made every November. Uh, by the Congress and they, they look at the cost of living increases and take some factors into account to, to decide on that. So I hope we have an increase uh, this year, but we won't really know that till November. Um, as, as far as your friend, uh, he needs to be paying taxes. Uh, but so if you're self-employed, because some people think, yeah. well, I'm self-employed and someone's paying me cash or checks. So if that's you and you've got a lump of money here, mm -hmm. okay, it's like I work here at Channel 5, so I get a paycheck every day and they take care of it, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if I worked by myself and I was making the money, then what I need to do is go and get the proper tax. What, what form do you fill out when you're... Um, well, I mean, you know, you can fill out schedules, schedule. C and SE, yeah. and go, you know, go through the the self-employment self tax forms. But, but I'll tell you how it affects Social Security. Right. That's because you're not IRS. Yeah, because that's I the IRS. But uh, but what happens? Because sometimes what you have is couples where they're working together and they just put all the money under the the husband's record. And so what happens? It, it, so they're paying taxes, but they've they've put it all under one re record. Well, what happens when the wife gets sick or wants and needs disability? or she she retires or she or she dies or something along those lines there's no benefits payable because on according to IRS records she's never paid anything into the Social Security system mm -hmm. and so I've seen that happen before where um, they were just thinking well six and one half a dozen the other we'll just build up you know the husband's record and so that's where I see it a lot of times but in your situation if he's not paying any taxes then he's not covered in, in under Social Security in any way. Yeah he'd have no claim to any of that benefit aside from the fact if he's not paying taxes on income as you know Jewel he's violating federal law and you have to pay taxes on your income and you know someone like that you hear about it you run a lawn service and you just do it I mean you'll fly under the radar. Mm -hmm. Now if they choose or somehow get flagged I don't know how they'd be flagged by him they can Look at his bank account and go, wow, look at all that money. Where'd you get that? Have you paid taxes on it? What's your name? What's your Social Security? Oh, you've never paid taxes. I mean, it's possible. You know, they have a Social Security number for mm -hmm. an adult male, and they, a flag comes up that there's an adult male out there. He's not collecting disability, and he has not paid any taxes. They could track him down. And if they do, they're going to figure out how much he earned, and he's going to have a ton of back taxes to pay. Mm -hmm. All right, so anyway, that's kind of more of a tax question than anything else, but that, that's interesting, Joel. I appreciate that. Let's go to Andy. Andy, good morning. Hello. Hi, Andy. How can we help you? Uh, I have two questions. Okay. One, um, I turned 65 last month. Um, I have, I get my Social Security, um, partial SSI. Um, the first one is, a, a few months back, Social Security put $500 on my account. And I thought, wow, that's great. Well, now they're trying to make me pay it back. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't understand that. And when I was on unemployment several years back, I had gotten two Social Security checks and didn't know it. I didn't check my account. Now they're trying to make me pay that back after so many years. So I, I don't... I've been to the Social Security office several times, and they keep uh, taking the $63 that they keep trying to take out, and they put it back to zero. Well, every month, they're trying to take the $63 out, and I, I call them or I go down there, and they put it back into my account. Mm. Hmm. So none of this is making any sense to me. What do you think? So the so the overpayment it's been paid back. Not yet, no. Okay. Mm -mm. So wait, I don't understand. If you have to pay back the overpayment, why would they put the money back in when you go in and complain? 
there you go. Well, I'm just saying, but why are you going in and complaining? I mean, you need to pay back the 500 bucks, right? Why did they give me the 500 to turn around and try to take it back away from me? Yeah, did they, what, was it a mistake? You yeah, and, the, and there are sometimes there's computational errors or there's d different situations that will sometimes pop up. And so we have what we call the waiver process. Um, and you can apply for a waiver. It's on a, the form number is an SSA 632. And I tell you that if you haven't already filed that, that will, I mean, you can put in there, hey, I didn't know anything about this, and he, here's the letter, and and then and you can put in there what your expenses are, so you can show that you're well. If you're on SSI, I mean, it's sure it's pretty much uh, automatic that you're unable to repay the benefit, um, and so you just I did. yeah, and so you, waiver, um, you a did, year okay. ago in December, and they came back and told me that it was money that I had to pay. I couldn't file a waiver on that money. Hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Wow, and so and it was just a, an extra five hundred that just showed up one month, and it surprised you, huh? Yes. Yeah, it's a tough yeah, one because now at that point, did you think you had that coming to you, or did you just think, oh well, I'll just take this money? Well, I thought, well, there's got to be a reason they're giving me the money. Okay, mm -hmm. see, and I understand where she's coming from. I mm -hmm. mean, you could make, I mean, she knew how much she was supposed to get, and this was clearly more than that, but maybe, you know, she figures the government, uh, she didn't apply for it, they're sending it to her, maybe it was some back money mm -hmm. she had coming to her, and so yeah. in fairness to her, I mean, you could make the argument, well, you should have noticed it and said, hey, why'd you send this to me? Or she could think, I had this coming, and she spends it, you know, on things that she needs, and now they're trying to get it back to her, and she's not in a position to be able to pay that back without it really putting her in a squeeze. Yeah. It's kind of a tough pickle. I mean, it's, I, I see both sides of this. I well, mean, there I should have been a letter in there. Yeah. I'm not saying there was. I'm just saying there should have been a letter in there somewhere to explain either why you got the $500 or why you got $500, now we need it back. <laughs> well, I know, um, I mean, why do you think, there was no letter, it just showed up in, in your account from Social Security, right? I did receive a letter um, oh, a little bit after the money showed up and said, where, I, I can't remember exactly, where we owe you 500 you know the wording, Yeah. Um, with Social Security, and I was like, well, that's wonderful, that's great, I could really use that money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then they're turning around now and trying to make me pay it back, and I'm like... I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, that, I wish you, you don't still have that letter, but you guys would have a record of the letter that was sent her. Could she find, I mean, she's been in there, have they not checked it out, and did they not explain to you, well, yeah, we sent you that letter, but we were wrong, or what, they screw up, do you have any idea? Um, when you call Social Security, <laughs> it's pretty much, this is the way it is. <laughs> okay. I, okay, I hear you. All right. So, well, that's why you called this show, and let's yeah. see if we can figure it out. I don't know. I'm well, the main thing is, and if we can get her information, yeah. I, I really got to look at the record, look at the notices, and try to figure out exactly where, what, you know, what's going on, because we don't, you know, if, 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 if you're not at fault, and if you're on SSI, you obviously don't have the ability to repay it. We, we want to get that um, taken care of. So, uh, so I mean, if we can get her phone yeah, no, number, yeah. I'll, I'll give her a call back later this morning, and we'll we'll pull everything up and That's try to awesome. figure that out. Yeah, because um, um, okay. especially if you call a couple of times and and they can't figure it out. And there are there are some complicated sure. situations um, that that take a little bit to pull apart and try to figure out. So we want to get that taken care of. All right, Andy, I'm going to put you on hold and uh, just give your phone number to Mary Elena during the break here. We'll pass that on to Josh. That's very nice of him. That's great. And that's why you call this show. I understand what you're saying. You get through. He'll figure it out for you, all right? And uh, with your number, at least you can get to the bottom of it. The answer may not be something you like. We'll see what the truth is. Mm -hmm. But if, if Josh can look into that for you, Andy, we'll do that. So hang on there. We'll get your number. And then uh, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, the phone line's still open, 737-7587. If you want to join in the conversation, we'll be back right after this.